The first one is mounting a Nevada on a Cinelifter. The what? The heck? A lot of people are uh, waiting for the O3 air unit and wondering when that's going to come. Okay. And so uh, Luke Maximo Bell, who we're looking at right now, uh, has taken matters into his own hands, and he's not interested in waiting. So he took apart a Nevada and put it on a Cinelifter. Oh, he didn't literally mount a Nevada. He took the air unit out of a Nevada. Correct. Yeah, okay. he goes through all that. You know, that he kind of teases sense. at the beginning, but then he shows all the breakdown process and how he does it. And uh, yeah, he gets basically the shell and the, the air unit part mm -hmm. onto the center lifter and then gets some shots with the center lifter. It's a pretty cool That's project. Pretty neat pretty idea. Cool. And a lot of people are uh, a lot of people are antsy for the O3. So this is another way to uh, to get similar kind of video, probably. Yeah, I mean, we assume that it's basically the same video. Oh, no, battery communication error. I wonder why. No GPS module. I wonder why. Critical low battery. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, all this stuff. It's still working, though, isn't it? It's still yeah, working. Yeah, it does work. It just doesn't do all the feature stuff, but it definitely yeah. works. Slick. Slick. Uh, well, you did it, Luke. You were the first, as far as I know, to do this. Uh, I hope it was worth it. And uh, very cool. Next up, a Mavic Mini flew above Mount Everest. Okay. Yeah. Again, it's barely news. We're just tossing the story in to let you know that uh, uh, they think this is the highest uh, they've seen a drone fly as far as like a commercially purchased drone. Um, and they, yeah, it flew at the top of Everest uh, above the peak. So oh, nice. it's kind of neat. That they got a Maverick 3 to fly that way. They had to do some customization to get it to fly up there. Sure. Um, some securing of the batteries and heating yeah. and a lot of different things they had to do, but um, kind of neat. And DJI has been advertising that. So we want to let you know that they did that with the Maverick 3. So that's pretty cool. Mr. Yeah. Steele went to, I don't think he, I don't think he summited though. Yeah. All right. Next up, this is going to get us a copyright right here. This is that's true. Major League Baseball footage. We're not going to show this footage. I don't want to. Copyright bullshit. In fact, it's probably safe yet since I froze the footage. Why don't we just talk about this one? And there's a link in the video description. What happened, Blunty? I'll try and yeah, like, um, scroll to a. So uh, as we would expect, um, has happened and it continues to still happen. Uh, more drones are flying on the fields at uh, games. And this one was at a baseball game. Oh, uh, drone. Oh, a game is being. In there it is. There's the. So this is how I'm going to get around copyright. There's that drone. Oh, hey, don't point that thing at me. Uh, looks like a Mavic to me. I don't know. I think it's a Phantom. Oh, what is it? Can we even tell what that is? Yeah, Mavic Mini, it looks like to me, oh. I would say. Cool. So, yeah, another drone Way to go, dipshit. The baseball games. I think this is going to keep happening. We probably won't tell you about every one of them, but uh, we've had a series of them in the last few months here, so... Uh... Yeah, I don't, I don't know why it keeps happening, but it definitely does keep because happening. And I imagine people are stupid people will, will continue to do this, unfortunately. It's the same reason you turned off comments on your YouTube channel. It's very true. Yes. Dipshit. we got to freaking interrupt a baseball game. Look, 50,000 people are here, and they're all having a good time. Let me fuck it up. What a... <laughs> In uh, almost opposite news, some great news for drones, oh. or what I would call great news. Uh, we've talked before about Lost Dogs SAR in the UK. Do we have more Lost Dog drone news? We do. Um, <sighs> in the fact that they've rescued so many dogs at this point from Lost Dogs SAR um, that they've given an award out to Graham Burton, who um, heads up Drone SAR and who started the search and rescue group. So they're five oh. years in. They've rescued a ton of dogs. Um, and yeah, they've got uh, 2,700 dogs so far reunited, uh, 3,000 active drone pilots, and 2,500 ground searchers doing these uh, rescue attempts. Wow. That's great. So pretty cool stuff. Yeah. See, this guy's not a dipshit. Correct. Not a dipshit. That's the difference. That's the... Hashtag not a dipshit. <laughs> yeah. We got one more. Drone piloting proficiency takes flight with certification course. Oh, boy. Another certification, Blunty. Well, so we've previously <laughs> talked about... Um, 
police knowing or not knowing about drones. Yeah. And I think this is interesting because this is an example of active uh, teaching that's happening to drone uh, just to police. So this happened in uh, Maryland this time, but they've done ones in different places. Uh, but they're basically giving a NIST uh, test. Uh, NIST is a National Institute of Standards and Technology. It's basically a big, uh, you know, like if you're HVAC, you calibrate all your instruments there. Um, it's like basically has a bunch of standards and things, and they develop standards for different groups. They have a standard for teaching about drones and drone safety and how drones work and stuff and uh, search and rescue with drones. And so they've developed this program that they're now teaching um, basically proctors who are coming from uh, individual uh, precincts. And then those proctors are going back and teaching all the people locally about how to properly use the drones and what the laws are and how to take care of them and all those kind of things. So it's kind of neat that they're getting some kind of hands-on experience with drones in uh, safe uh, situations and they can uh, learn more about them so the police aren't as confused. I'm trying to figure out what these buckets are. Their buckets have visual cues in them so you yeah, know so how far different. away you are when the buckets align? Yeah, so there's different tests that they try to do um, to try to get you, like, an idea of how to move the drone, like, um, you know, like in specific directions and, and scenarios. Right. So if you have to navigate through windows or obstacles or around things, um, you have better control. Interesting. This is fascinating. This is really fascinating. I'm always interested yeah. in training people to become drone operators, drone pilots, and seeing someone taking a, you know, I'm, I'm just like, I don't know, here's the controller, let's do some shit. But seeing someone take this kind of a structured approach is actually really fascinating. Um, that is, uh, oh, no, there's one more. One, is there one more? One more. Oh, yep. Go ahead. Um, so one more. We've talked, we've kind of stopped talking about all the drone light shows because there's been so many. But one we wanted to bring to your attention is the company who's done, um, you know, they did the Burning Man shows last year and this year. And we even talked about them when they did that show in Germany where the drones fell out of the sky and they blamed it on other drones. Mm -hmm. um, but now they have another show. Um, where they're doing uh, different displays at uh, buildings. And you can see from these different pictures, Whoa, the they're going to monuments. Yeah, you know, they're going to monuments and using drones to finish, you know, the what it used to look like, sort of, and kind of give a, a cool art presentation for people. Uh, so, yeah, kind of neat that's idea. I've never, seen, really never cool. seen that before. That's very cool. That's really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Like augmented reality, but, you know, nice, nicer in some. You don't have to wear a helmet, VR helmet. 